All right, welcome to the Real Estate Investor Goddesses podcast. I'm your host, Monique Hom. On this show, we invite incredible, badass real estate investing women to share their stories, their triumphs, their mistakes, their best advice with us. And I am super excited today to have with us Kim Wilkin. She is known as the Abundant Traveler, and um, which is near and dear to my heart because I do love to travel. She's a platinum top 50 realtor in Austin, Texas, and she is the top 3% of realtors in Austin. She's built an incredible business and lifestyle with her real estate, with her real estate career and as well as her passive income investments. So she currently invests in long-term rentals and syndicated real estate funds. With the time and financial freedom that her real estate provides, she travels the world sharing her laid back luxury travel experiences on her YouTube channel, The Abundant Traveler. With The Abundant Traveler, she inspires other women to buy that plane ticket, pack their bags and see the world. I'm so excited to have her. Welcome, Kim. Thank you, Monique. I am so excited to be here. I love your podcast. I binge listen to your podcast, take notes every time. I just love it. I'm thrilled to be here and thank you for inviting me. Thank you for being here. So I, I mean, there are a couple of things that I love. I mean, I love how you are about real estate investing for freedom and travel, which is something that's dear, near and dear to my heart. Um, you are a realtor as well as an investor. So how did you get started in real estate investing? And real estate investing, my grandparents were actually investors back in the day when you could do assumable loans and they lived in a military town. So they would assume the loans and the houses for the military guys that were being stationed somewhere else. And as a result, I remember my grandmother told me one time, she said, Kim, I'm a school teacher. I've never made more than $18,000 a year. We have created our life, our nest egg, our everything through real estate and it just put that in the back of my mind all those years ago when I was really little helping paint the walls of course mm -hmm. um, that real estate is a real way to creating wealth and so when I was old enough I started investing as a small-time investor long-term rentals and primarily as my investments I have chosen the more passive long-term rentals because being a realtor now is my active income. So that, that's what I've chosen. Instead of fix and flip as my active income or wholesaling, I've chose being a residential realtor. And then the passive is having my long-term rentals. I love that. So a lot of people ask me, and I'm not a realtor. I'm not, um, I'm not an agent or a broker. But a lot of people ask me, do you need to be, or, you know, a, you need to have your license in order to invest in real estate. And I don't know you don't, but there are, you know, what do you see benefits to having a license and being a, being an investor? For me, it, I was an investor first and chose to become a realtor second. And I find that it's a little bit of insider trading when you have all of the data and all of the information and all of your colleagues are actually in real estate. On the flip side, there are fiduciary responsibilities as a realtor that you don't have as just an investor. And an investor can go into anyone's house, basically say anything they need to say to, you know, make the transaction happen. And so it's, it's more, I'm more on the retail level now, but I feel like the benefit is the inside information that I do have. I still talk to investors, I'm still involved in, investor groups. It's just that I'm looking at it from a different perspective. And of course we work together very well because I have the license and they don't. So sometimes I have friends that are working together. I sell the house, they find it. We work together from that perspective as well. Okay. Yeah. So there, there are some benefits to it. There are some limitations to it uh, in terms of the fiduciary duties. So, you know, for, for everyone who's wondering, do I need to get that license before I start investing in real estate? The answer is no, you don't. Um, some ways it's helpful, some ways it's not. It's a so, personal choice. Yeah. So. yeah. But it's, a not, it's just like a different business. It is. It's yeah. completely different. 
completely different animal. It was just a choice from my perspective to go yes. the residential realtor way. Okay. That, no, I'm, I'm glad we talked about this because this is something I get all the time. And just say, so, you know, and to be clear, real estate investor glasses is for real estate investing. It's not for real estate selling, <laughs> like being an agent. True. Yeah. Um, so in terms of your current investments, you said now you have long-term rental. Tell us a little bit more about where you are now with your real estate. Uh, my, working on. my goal is to recreate my active income passively. I want financial freedom. It's that simple. That is the end goal to take care of myself with financial freedom. And that is passive income, not active income. So currently I have seven rentals um, and my goal is in the next probably 18 months to add another three to the portfolio and it becomes my retirement. It becomes my passive income now. They're all cash flow positive. It's, it's amazing and they're pretty plug and play. I choose B plus or A quality uh, long-term rentals and very, very strict on vetting the tenants. And as a result, I have wonderful tenants and fantastic properties that just need regular maintenance that any home would need. Are you self-managing? I manage half of them. The other half, I have a property manager because the numbers work with the property manager in, I'm in another city, I'm actually in Fort Worth uh, with a couple of my rentals and my property manager there takes care of everything. So I just get the check in the mail, which is great. That's my favorite kind. <laughs> Wait, the money's in my bank account? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to do anything for it. Oh, that's what, that's yes. truly passive income and what I'm about. So um, where are you, so you said you have some in Fort Worth, where are your other properties? In Austin, where, the okay. rest are in Austin, Texas. The market has been strong, very grateful to be based here. And someone told me a long time ago with your real estate invest investments, put them within arm's reach. That way when you're around your working environment, you're taking care of them. But when you're gone to some foreign country, you're not thinking about what's back at home. So. Mm. Everything's close at hand and I can drive there if I need to. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've had to, when I, when you're in an expensive market like LA, that's a little harder. So I don't invest in my backyard. I don't invest where I can reach my properties. Um, but that, that is the personal choice. It is. Um, what, so tell me a little bit about the abundant traveler. Cause you're, you know, that's, that's definitely your your passion and your baby um, and my my passions about traveling too so tell us tell us more about that so I've used real estate to really create my best life both active and passive income and my best life is traveling I have been a traveler as long as I can remember I lived overseas I lived in Europe for five and a half years after I graduated from college and I just got back from my 62nd country and travel is what I absolutely love to do. And people started asking me, where should I go? What should I do? I'm too afraid to go. I can't afford to go. I don't have the time to go. And one day I decided that I was just going to share as much as I know about travel with anyone who is willing to listen on my YouTube channel. And my goal is to provide as much value as I possibly can. And I want to inspire other women who don't think that they can go for whatever reason, for safety reasons, for financial reasons, for time reasons, they don't think they can go. And I want to inspire them that yes, it is possible. Any price range, any location in the world, the world is gorgeous and amazing and cultures are different cultures, different people, different lands, different food, it just, that's my rocket. So, yeah, I was grateful enough creating with the real estate. I was in Europe two months this summer. So, you know, which has been a long time goal to get there, to be able to spend two months overseas again. So, yeah, that's the beauty of real estate and financial freedom. I was telling you before we start recording, I'm going to be spending a year abroad next year with my, with my husband and our youngest daughter um, just traveling around the world and we can do that because of real estate investing. Yes. So 
So I'm exciting. so excited for you and a little envious. <laughs> it's gone for a year, but not there yet. Yeah. There. Soon, soon. Um, so I want to ask you a question that I ask all my guests. Yes. Uh, because I think you, we learn so much more from what doesn't work out well <laughs> than the times when it's smooth sailing. So what was your biggest mistake in real estate and what did you learn from it? Really and truly, a couple of mistakes that I've thought about. One, I didn't start early enough. Um, I should have started earlier and the fear factor came in. Uh, you know, I, I don't, can I do this? Can I do this? Um, as a result, I have about halfway to my goal and I will be 50 in February. So I wish that I had started earlier. Secondly, since I'm involved in long-term rentals primarily at this point, I wish I would have chosen more homes in the central part of the cities where I'm invested in. Um, a couple of properties, I looked at the bright, shiny objects of the new houses out in the suburbs further out. And as a result, the appreciation in both the value of the house and the appreciation in the rental income has not come to fruition like I had hoped. Whereas if I stayed very centrally located, maybe I would have gotten a little less of a duplex or a fourplex or a house, but the value would have been better over the long haul. So, yeah. Yeah. The real estate location, location, location. <laughs> And not just markets, but submarket, right? Yeah. So being where people most want to be. Mm -hmm. well, yes. Yeah. It so. generally pays off. Yeah. So those are, those are good. And the, and the starting earlier, I hear that so much. And I, it's the it's same with me. It's like, gosh, if I had only started, <laughs> you know, I, and at my, we had a, a real, wealth of real estate event a few weeks ago and there was, there were women in there that were in their early twenties. And I was just like, you go, <laughs> I was, oh, so I was there. like that was me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I think I got my first investment at 31 and I mm -hmm. wish I'd, I'd started yeah. earlier. Find your mentors and start early. And if you don't have the knowledge or the money to do it, find the person who does and do the grunt work for them. Yeah. What can I do? How can I provide you value and learn from you? And it would have been great at 20 to do that. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's like uh, real estate investing is like planting a tree, right? The best time, when was the best time to do it 20 years ago? And the next best time is now. So if you haven't, like, when would now be a good time to start? I guess that's our question. For sure. Um, For sure. So what are you most proud of? I am most proud of creating this amazing life that I have created. Um, I did a hard stop on my previous career and previous life and chose real estate to build the life I want to live. And it's working. Um, honestly, it's working very well. I'm so happy in my active income. I'm thrilled with my passive income and I'm thrilled that I can now travel and go and spend time with my friends. I have created this amazing life in Austin and it wasn't that way seven years ago. I was just a real estate investor in a position that I didn't want to be in and I've put a hard stop and created this instead. So I'm very grateful and proud of that. Oh, Thank you, real estate. Thank you, all avenues of real estate. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Me too. I, sometimes I just pinch myself um, for this life that I get to live. And I, I too, thank real estate for that. Just mm -hmm. get, you know, getting into it and discovering this. It's just, it's like, yeah. where, where would I be without you? <laughs> so, <laughs> um. And to what do you attribute your success? Keep going. Just keep going. Put on those boots every morning and keep on trucking. Um, don't take no for an answer. Learn from a mistake and keep on trucking. That's just the best way to get somewhere, um, in my opinion. And just keep going. Keep, keep going. And it gets easier. Remember that you can hit the easy button. It doesn't have to be a struggle, 
Yeah. But it, you have to keep going. It doesn't have to be the middle of winter and you're parking thousand, you know, hundred <laughs> mile an hour winds. You can hit that easy button and still, yeah. but just. So, so then you'd say you attribute your success to your persistence. Yes. Yeah. And Um, learning. learning. You've got to keep learning. You've got to find mentors wherever you are. You've got to adjust. You have to take the different path, go around the obstacle and find the right people to help you um, wherever you are. And as we grow and we change and we learn more about real estate, we need different mentors along the way. So, yeah. Yeah, I think mentorship is so crucial. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, and what advice do you have for a woman who's just starting out? Go do it. Do it. Don't be afraid. <laughs> it's, it's honestly okay to ready, fire, aim. You know, yeah. just, just jump in. Okay, jump in lightly. Jump into the kitty end of the pool, but jump in and do it. Don't be afraid to do it. You're going to make mistakes, but that's okay. We all make mistakes and we all just keep on going and we learn from those mistakes. Um, and, you know, just don't bet the farm either. So, yeah, little steps, baby steps. Yeah, one of, my, run. one of my mentors told me, fail small. Yes. <laughs> fail small. Like fail often, but fail small. <laughs> Get in, but don't bet it. Don't do everything. You don't have to like make it a huge failure. Um, but yeah, it's like test, test small and fail small. Um, so you, you know, at the beginning you had said that one of your, what you, one of your mistakes was not starting earlier because you had fear. What helped you get over that fear to finally get in the game? Um, I've done a lot of personal development and getting out of my own way, uh, through personal development, through things like the secret, the book through Tony Robbins, through business coaches, just getting out of my own way has allowed me to do this. I didn't know I could be here. You know, you just, what, that's a possibility. I can go where I can be where. Um, and all of that coaching and all of that work, um, both external and internal work has gotten me here and it just keeps getting better. Yeah. So good. Yeah. I'm a huge, huge proponent of the personal development side. Mm -hmm. Um, I too have invested so much, um, in that and that's made all the big, all the difference. It's also why you know, in my, the Wealthy Goddess program, so much of it is on the personal development side because as Tony Robbins says, success is 20% strategy, only 80% psychology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so you get out of your own way so you can be successful. And then with personal develop, development, you also, also realize that you are successful at every yeah. step of the way. And you're, you're great where you are and you want to strive to be better, but you have to recognize the accomplishments that you've made so far, which is sometimes hard to do. So, yeah, well, we're, we're going to do that a little bit when you get to brag, but <laughs> before we do, um, two, two more questions for you. Uh, one is what do you wish you'd known at the beginning that you now know? I wish that it was okay to, I knew that it was okay to jump to go ahead and leap, to go ahead and start. I just was afraid. I didn't know it was okay. I didn't know I was following the rules of somebody else. So I wish that I had known that it's okay. Somebody had given me permission to take my own path and tell me that it was okay. So I wish you'd given yourself permission. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. giving myself. I didn't know I could to begin with. So yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, and last but not least, before we get into our famed end of show trinity, our brag, our gratitude, and desire, what's the best way for people to connect with you? Um, a couple of ways. Uh, through real estate is kimwilkin.com. And through the Abundant Traveler YouTube channel, it is theabundanttraveler.com or the Abundant Traveler on YouTube. So I would love subscribers. I love hearing who the new people are and learning a little bit about you. 
and hearing your travel stories. So please subscribe so I can get to know you. Yeah, Love it. that's all right. Um, KimMulkin.com and then The Abundant Traveler. Okay, so now it's time for your Trinity. Okay, yay. Right, a, a brag. What do you, what's your brag? What are you celebrating? So the brag, I chatted with a girlfriend of mine this morning and we walked together and we were discussing this. And honestly, the brag is creating the life that I've created where I could spend two months a summer in Europe. It's been a goal for six or seven years to be able to spend part of my year back in Europe. And this year it was two months without missing a lake. So yay, hit well my goal. Um, hit my goal. Well whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> and what are you grateful for? Um, I'm grateful for the people that are around me. Uh, at my real estate business, there are, they are amazing colleagues. The company is about building the best life that you can live. And I'm grateful to have those types of high performing, both professionally and personally high performing people in my life. I'm so grateful for them. I can't even tell you. So yeah, very, very grateful to be a part of them. So. Beautiful. Thank you. And last but not least, what's one desire? I desire to have my man and travel with my man. I'm looking for him. Where is he? <laughs> Where's my man? That would be, that would be amazing. And out there. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, abundant traveler looking for you. Um, <laughs> Well, so shall your desire be, or so much better than you can imagine. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah. And so it is. Um, and so we are at the end of our show. Thank you so much. That was so, so fun to, to have you, Kim. Um, so that was Kim Wilkin. You can find her at the abundant traveler or kimwilkin.com and you can find me at real estate investor goddesses.com if you don't want to type so much go to rei goddesses.com that's your that's your best bet there you can join our community of um our real estate investor goddesses from all over the world you can join our investor club and get access to our um, passive investing opportunities and get more resources and information for your to to start creating your dream life through real estate so um, find us, find all that at reigoddesses.com and subscribe to the show and give us reviews, especially if they're five stars or better. Um, and, uh, and join us next week for another amazing real estate investor goddess interview. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. So grateful. My pleasure.